I'm the first winner of a, a new award. It's a joint award from two organizations. One organization is the International Water Association, or IWA. It is the leading uh, water organization dealing with research, practice, policy worldwide. They have teamed up uh, with another international organization, the ISME, or the International Society for Microbial Ecology, and they formed um, what's known as the BioCluster. I'm really, really thrilled about this. And I'm thrilled about it because this joining of engineering with microbiology is what I do. It's what I've been doing for essentially my entire career. This year, 2014, is the 100 year anniversary of the most prominent uh, type of wastewater treatment. It's called activated sludge. It's used to remove uh, basic organic contaminants and also sometimes nitrogen and phosphorus from, uh, from wastewater. Sludge simply refers to uh, organic solids that are in a slurry. Now the activated part means that we've developed a technology in which we can hold in and accumulate or build up a high concentration of these organisms. So the sludge is very active at the biodegradation process. So it's universally used, it's successful, it's really allowed us to uh, create uh, high density uh, human uh, cities, for example, uh, without just completely following the environment and creating all kinds of public health problems as well. It's significantly higher between the FP and the control, but the same trend. What's next in store is that we're going to make some pretty major changes in the technology. We're looking for ways to uh, eliminate the negatives of activated sludge, but still retain the, the benefits of it. In an activated sludge process, the organisms take and use almost all the energy, leaving nothing for us. What we do is we use a different set of organisms with different conditions so that they'll just take a little bit of the energy and they'll convert most of it into forms that are useful to us. Forms like methane gas, which is the same as natural gas, or uh, say electrical power. In this area of getting the microbial systems to produce a high value energy output, one of our biggest areas is in what we call microbial electrochemical cells. And these rely on bacteria that have a really interesting way of living. And they'll, they'll take organic material and oxidize it, that's the same as us. But what they'll do is they'll transfer the electrons not to oxygen, like we do, but they'll transfer it to the anode of a fuel cell. Uh, the, an anode is just a solid conductive material. Now we have an electrical current. And so that electrical current will then proceed through an electrical circuit to a cathode where we can do a number of different things with those electrons, each of which generates a valuable uh, energy output to us. So we have a, a technology called the membrane biofilm reactor. Uh, which is a very efficient means to deliver hydrogen gas directly to uh, the microorganisms. We have what we call hollow fibers. Imagine a straw, but a very, very, very tiny straw. And we put hydrogen gas on the inside. Now hydrogen gas diffuses through the wall of the, of the little straws and living on the outside of the straw attached as a biofilm, they will oxidize it and then they will use the electrons they get from that to reduce the nitrate or the perchlorate or the selenate or one of the other oxidized contaminants. We're confronted with much, much more challenging problems that microorganisms can address, but we need to be much more sophisticated in understanding what organisms can do it, how they're going to do it, and how we're going to create a system. So it's not just a bunch of sludge. It's individual organisms comprising a community that's working together. And now we have a chance to really manage that community to get the right organisms doing the right job.